I am Romaine Jenkins, and the Freeway Phantom cases will never leave me. I was born in Washington, D.C., Northeast. I was a neglected infant. My grandparents took me in because there was no one else to care for me. I joined the Metropolitan Police Department June 21st, 1965. I wanted to do social type work. I did not join the police department to lock anybody up. My first assignment was at the Women's Bureau, and there I worked on cases involving battered and neglected children. We were social workers with a gun. We could go into a situation where kids' lives was in danger, and we could remove these kids without a court order. After that, I was the first female homicide detective. May of 1971, there were all kinds of anti-war demonstrations. So the city was in a total uproar. If you wanted to be a criminal, this was the time to do it because all the police were pretty much tied up. I was in homicide and I remember when Carol Spinks' case happened. She was a 13-year-old black female. April the 25th, she went to the grocery store. Her mother watched her go into the store, and on May the 1st, that's when her remains were found. The autopsy shows that she had been strangled. There is some type of sexual assault, and whoever had her kept her alive for several days because there was food content found in her stomach by the medical examiner. There were six cases. Everybody is strangled. There is some type of sexual assault in most of the cases. Some of them are found on interstates. Darlene Johnson was a 16-year-old female. She lived in the same neighborhood as Carol Spinks. She's only found 15 feet from where Carol Spinks is. So their bodies are basically in the same area. Brenda Faye Crockett is a 10-year-old female. She goes to the store alone. She doesn't come back right away. The next morning, her body's found by a hitchhiker on Route 50. Nina Moshe Yates was 13 years of age. She was sent to the grocery store by her father, which is a block from her house. Same neighborhood, the store and her home. Almost two hours later, her remains are found on Route 4. Brenda Woodard, she was 18. When she left night school, she caught the bus. The next day, her body is found. Prince George's Hospital, Route 202. Inside her coat pocket, because her coat was draped over her, there was a note from the killer. This is tantamount to my insensitivity to people, especially women. I'll admit the others if you catch me if you can, Freeway Phantom. Diane Williams, I believe, was 18. She had gone to visit her boyfriend, and she was coming home on the bus. The next day, her body is found on Route 295, southbound, inside the District of Columbia. Those child deaths really, really touched me. I was used to seeing things, but I had never been confronted 
with anything like this before. I realize somebody has to speak for these children. You know what, I'm gonna be the one. The press dubbed the cases, the freeway phantom cases. This was the first time we had ever had anything like this. So we were totally, totally unprepared. The term serial killer or mass murder, all this stuff was not even thought of at that time. Everybody was a suspect. They had priests, they had four-star generals. I just think they were looking at the wrong suspects. You have all females who are killed, and who do they have working on the investigation? A whole bunch of men. And they look at things totally different than I did. In my opinion, the forensics on it show he was a black male. He was in his early to mid 20s. He had been in Vietnam. Why did I say that? When I showed the note to two separate people, one was from the FBI and one was from Naval Investigations and they both said, that note is military. The guy from the FBI said, I wrote orders like that. That is military. As a homicide detective, you have to almost put a shield around you. And sometimes you just ignore things. They just pass by you just like water running down the street. You can't save the world. But this case stuck with me as long as it has because I feel a responsibility to the girls. I always try to keep it in my mind that I have to speak for these children. I retired from the Metropolitan Police Department December 1994. The Freeway Phantom cases are still unsolved. Not a week goes by that I don't think about the girls in these cases. Parents have died not knowing who killed their kids. And to die like these girls, this is hard on the families. And so if anybody has any information, please just contact us.